Okay, <clears throat> back in the swing of it, we we're back to doing monster tactics. It's been quite a while since I did a video on monster tactics, so this is going to be interesting, and I'm doing it live, as I often do with everything. So hopefully you'll benefit from this and I won't make a complete mess of it. Alright, the sound check is good, the sound is coming through, so I'm going to get rid of my earplugs. And uh, look, if you're re-watching the live stream for the first time, you'll find that the start time is down, <coughs> pardon me, down in the description. So just look down there and you'll find it down there. Otherwise, look, if you haven't watched my live streams before, one of the things I tend to do is I present everything first. Once I've done that, I open it up to questions. So my suggestion to you is... By all means, give feedback, ask questions while I'm doing this, um, even say hi, I'm fine with that too, it's always good. Um, but I'll respond to all of your um, comments in the live chat once I've finished talking about ogres. Okay, <clears throat> last drink and um, we're ready to get cracking, so let's get started, shall we? Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e and monster tactics for the ogre. Now, um, ogres are renowned. It's almost guaranteed that somebody has probably heard of an ogre. They're legendary for how stupid and physically strong they are. So if you want information or details on the ogre, Please see page 237 of the Monster Manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. So when it comes to tactics for uh, any kind of ogre, we're going to start with the very basics. Things that we really know um, a little bit more about. And that is, they have a furious temper. And they're notorious for flying into a rage over the smallest slight or insult or perceived insult. You might not have insulted them at all, but they will perceive it as such. Hence, they throw themselves into a, 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 a fit of fury. Gruesome in the way that they eat. They are absolutely gruesome gluttons. They eat almost anything. But they also enjoy playing with their food before they finish it off and consume it. It's a bit like a pussycat. You know how the pussycat finds the little mouse, plays with it until it finally dies, and then bites its head off. That's essentially what I would put the ogre into the, the bracket of. That's how they play with their food. Now, if their food annoys them, it's going to get eaten a lot faster, and certainly they're not going to play with it until it perishes. But they are renowned for just eating everything in an area and then moving on to another location to eat yet more of whatever they can find. They are greedy collectors. They are raiders and they tend to go after unprotected cabins that are in the wilderness, farmhouses, isolated locations, looking for little trinkets and treasures that they can use and keep. Now it's not just about gems, gold, sparkly things. They like sparkly things for sure. But what they're really interested in is some of the most bizarre items. Things we would consider trash. They will acquire uh, your front door, um, a barrel. They might decide that um, your orange tree out the front of your, your front yard is going to make an excellent club for them. So they collect all sorts of rather peculiar things that they find as they're raiding and scavenging uh, around the countryside. They are quite primitive in how they function. Now when I say primitive, they are primitive wanderers. They just wander around eating in a location and when they finish the food source there, they move on to a new food source, but they use very crude tools and weapons for hunting and scavenging. So they'll tend to pick up things that one don't require a lot of skill because they don't really make anything uh, they might tie or lash something onto a stick uh, to make a sort of like a javelin or a spear. But that's really about it. They don't really get too involved with anything. 
Ogres are also um, prone to being feeling nocturnal in their, uh, their activities. So they, they sleep in caves, uh, animal dens, under trees, or in, even in an isolated um, building or a ruin, and they tend to sleep during the day, preferring to hunt at night and use their dark vision to their advantage on unfortunately sleeping creatures that are unaware that they are roaming around the countryside looking for something to chomp on. Now, they don't absolutely have to function this way. This is how I see the ogre, and which is why I'm doing this video. But they will tend to wander around at night hunting for food. That doesn't mean they just bash through um, foliage. If they have to move through foliage, obviously they will make noise because they're large. But they will, they're smart enough to know that they need to be able to be slightly quiet to get what they need, which is food. Otherwise, they would go extinct and they never find anything other than just carrion to eat. So they do actually function mostly at night. Now, if you... <laughs> they don't just wander around on their own. Um, and I'll get more into this. So what happens if the party were to come across something like an ogre? They're more likely to find the ogre in a cave sleeping than they are at night. Uh, while the, the party are sleeping and, and set up their camp at night, the, just the light from their fire is going to draw an ogre or ogres, ogres and their allies, to that location to cause a lot of trouble for them. So that's how I see the ogre in terms of how they're probably going to interact. If you find the ogre, they're probably sleeping in their little den, or if um, they find uh, the player's characters or the adventurers, it's probably because they have been camped up for the night and they've spotted the light uh, from their, their campfire. Now, when it comes to uh, allies, you don't just find one ogre, usually. Usually, you will find many ogres, and if you only find um, two ogres, there might be more ogres around. So they do function in groups rather than just wander around aimlessly waiting for somebody to polish them off. They're not really sol solo uh, creatures. They will also band together with other creatures and form allies, um, particularly with uh, creatures and beasts and giants that they have uh, similar behaviours. So orcs are a good example and um, they will also tend to work with smarter creatures particularly giants because they are a match in terms of their strength um, or physically stronger than them and they value strength orcs value strength as well and uh, they will also uh, align themselves uh, and this is the most dangerous time is when they align themselves with a giant which has better weaponry. Better weaponry is always bad. Okay, so I was talking about uh, if the adventurers find an ogre or a group of ogres, they're likely to, it's likely that it'll be during the day in a cave, in a dark location, while the ogres are resting. Orc allies will be usually a large war band uh, that gets bullied. Um, now, there might be one orc amongst the warband that's quite strong and able to sort of keep the ogre in line if there is an ogre that's a, a, you know, sort of aligned itself with an orc band. But it would have to be fairly powerful and probably quite strong because um, things like magic are it's a little bit beyond an ogre really. So understanding power from magic not going to be quite so useful, but somebody who's quite powerful and strong and quite large, an ogre understands that sort of thing. Now, occasionally you'll get a group where um, the orcs are sort of adopted by the ogre and the ogre lords it over the orcs and kind of bullies them. And unfortunately, if there's, the pickings aren't very good, uh, there will be times when the, the smaller, weaker individuals or orcs within the group might find themselves getting eaten if the food supply is not particularly good. Now when it comes to giants, probably the most common giant that an ogre will align itself with are the hill giant. 
Hill giants are the most likely ally for an ogre. And hill giants will treat ogres extremely badly. Pretty much as sort of like slaves and servants. They're so much larger, but they also have a, a very similar sort of outlook. So ogres will band together with a hill giant and hill giants will band together with ogres because their behaviors are quite similar. They function in a similar manner which makes them a good fit, even if it is a dysfunctional relationship of some kind. The next giant that you're likely to see ogres with is the frost giant. Frost giants are uh, actually pretty good as an ally for an ogre, uh, because one, they'll be less cruel than the hill giants to the ogre. Seems strange, but yes, they are likely to be less, less cruel but they will also increase the difficulty of an ogre in combat. Now what I mean by this is they will increase the ogre's tactical level and skill level or appearance simply because the frost giants will give them sound orders and instructions. They might even equip them with better armor and weapons which will make them significantly more dangerous to deal with. So what I want to do is I want to open it up and just show you basically how this might look in terms of social interactions and combat. The first thing I would say is social interactions are probably doomed to failure or destined for failure. So why is that? That seems a little odd for me to be saying that. But the, the reason being is that ogres don't really have a very good, strong uh, grasp of common, speaking common, understanding common. They don't even have a particularly good grasp of giant, which makes it very difficult to communicate with them. So you have to use very, very simple terms. So that's why I mean social interactions are destined for disaster, as they simply probably will not understand you. And what happens when an ogre find something confusing or doesn't understand something. Well, they do the one thing they do best. They get angry, they get annoyed, and the result is that things get smashed or broken. So whoever caused them to get angry, annoyed, confused is probably going to be the target of their frustration. Ogres will tend to pick on the smallest and weakest individual in a fight first. That doesn't mean that they don't understand the concept of armor. Um, what it just simply means is they assign danger to size. Uh, size in, and strength is the thing that they assign things. It's the thing they understand the most. So whoever is near the front who is quite small or smaller than everybody else is probably the target they will go after first. Now you might think, well, when you look at the ogre stat block, which frankly is, it's pretty simple. It doesn't look particularly impressive. In fact, it looks almost like a, a joke in terms of uh, what's going on there. But uh, honestly, it's, it's only because they are using simple tactics rather than they are completely stupid, okay? What, what's going on here is they are using simple tactics. So it's very easy to fall into the trap to think that they simply use no strategy whatsoever or have no tactical um, understanding whatsoever. It's not that at all. It's, it's simply that they use simple strategies relying on strength, usually melee attacks right up close. They will use a grapple or a shove. So for example, um, a grapple might be used against an enemy if that particular target is very, very small and easy to grab hold of, or in particular, they're moving in and out of combat and that's frustrating the ogre, then they would certainly consider grabbing onto that particular uh, creature so it can't keep jumping in and, out of, in and out of combat. Shoving a creature off something, ogres will, would certainly use their strength to do that. So pushing somebody into a pit into um, fire so that they wind up perishing sooner, absolutely they would do something like that. Will they use a javelin? Not really. 
and and the rationale behind this is that unless you're out of reach and they can't get up close to you to hit you with something uh, that's being held by their hand such as their great club they're probably not going to use their javelin if you're flying they'd use a javelin absolutely otherwise they're just going to keep moving towards their target and then smash it with something that they're holding in their hands because that's what they understand fleeing is pretty unlikely as well um, although they might consider fleeing combat if they're dealing with something that's as big as them and or even bigger that's probably the only time if they start taking injuries and damage and getting hurt and the thing that they are fighting is particularly large so there are times when the players characters could find that they could scare off an ogre or ogres and that would probably be a situation where uh, somebody is cast in large on one of the characters and they've increased their size or they've used polymorph and, and turned themselves into something like a t-rex or a giant ape so tend to not flee from combat unless they're dealing with an enemy that is larger or about the same size as them i tend to view an ogre's behavior in combat as being quite erratic at times which what that looks like is they seem to be stupid they're not actually stupid in fact they're quite they're just quite simple of mind that's really all it is so i'm going to open up this um little situation i've, I've been showing you this map for a little while so what i've given you is sort of a, um, your standard sort of situation where one ogre is unlikely where you find one ogre there's usually more ogres or more creatures there's probably going to be a collection of ogres all together who come across the, the adventurers and it's probably going to be at night um, doesn't need to be as many as this i'm just planting these on the table because one i had them and i pulled them out and you might have some sentries and they will spot your campfire from a distance and and head towards you that doesn't mean that they will be yelling and screaming they will probably just move up as quietly as they can move in and engage and use their clubs now Ogres use um, 40, 40 feet, but that's their speed. So they move pretty quickly. If they can't get into combat by just moving, and then um, they wouldn't just move and then make an, a, a javelin attack. So for example here, so we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Not actually in, in reach. They've only got five foot reach, even though they're large. They wouldn't pull out a javelin and hiff it at the sentries. They would just keep moving. They would dash. Dash is certainly something they would consider. As I said, javelins would be something that they would use only really if they're dealing with um, something that they can't get to. If they can't get to it, then use the javelins. Right, let's pile this away. And when it comes to something like your orcs, you might get a warband like this. I'm just pop up all my characters and say they have woken up or been woken up because obviously they probably would be woken up suddenly they had to deal with <coughs> monsters what's likely to happen is there'll be a an ogre in the group who's a bit bigger than all the rest say this one here this will be the one that will tend to keep the ogre in line um, and Orcs will definitely allow the ogre to go first, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't use their aggressive feature. So if you're thinking, ah, all right, um, we're, we're going to sort of line it up so that the, the orcs run in first because they move faster, and once we've done that, um, then uh, we'll engage because then finally the, the ogre will catch up. Um, orcs are a little bit smarter about how they do things, not hugely bright about it, but I would say just have them move up. The only time you're going to get a rush is once they know that the, the gig is up, really. So the intelligence level of an ogre is really based off whoever they're with. So if this ogre here is real, I'm sorry, orc is quite smart, an orig, for example, then it's going to give instructions to the um, ogre, and that will tend to be something they will follow. So Getting up, it's really simple. Now the thing is with um, your attacks with the javelin, you only get 
two six-sided dice. It's not a lot. Two six-sided dice with a javelin, and you're only adding to that a plus four. So making attack, you don't do quite as much damage. Okay? So that's one of the, the trade-offs with using the javelin. Um, it is much more likely to use 2d8 plus 4 bludgeoning damage with the, the Great Club. So that's what I would suggest you, do, you use. And uh, when it comes to something like um, disengaging, it's probably not something that an ogre worries too much about. Um, maybe not even the dodge action, although you could have them dodge. Um, they might dodge if they're dealing with something that they consider a threat. But I wouldn't use high-end um, tactics with them. You can certainly make them do erratic things. That's all fine. Um, when it comes to dealing with larger creatures, so if they align themselves with, say, something like a hill giant, such as this fellow here, they're going to be letting the hill giant take the lead. So you're more likely to have a situation where um, the hill giant gets up and the ogre joins in. Okay, something like that. Um, much more dangerous is a situation, like I said, where there is frost giants involved. Frost giants tend to use slightly better equipment than hill giants, and therefore they can give weaponry and armor to something like um, our, our ogre. And that's really, I think, the basics of it. it. I know it doesn't seem like an awful lot. Um, I ha have I actually shown you that much? Really, I think what I've tried to do is sort of give you um, a very general brush stroke on how to run your ogres. Don't do anything particularly complicated, but don't do anything um, completely stupid. Um, remember, erratic rather than stupid. I know uh, it says in the Monster Manual that they are legendary for how stupid they are. And you can certainly play them that way. I've had my ogres... Um, drop their weapons and pick up somebody else's weapon. I've had them just flee rather than disengage and so they've had attacks of opportunity on them um, and if there might have been you know uh, three or four individuals engaged then that's been quite a lot of attacks and they, they might not survive that. That's perfectly fine too. Okay, so that's really all I have on the tactics for our, our ogre for today. Hopefully it has been slightly useful to you in some way. I certainly hope it has. And if it has, please share and like the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing to my channel, hitting the bell button to be notified when I go live, and when I publish new videos, which I do publish new videos that are pre-recorded. Uh, if you want to support my channel, you supported my channel by watching this video, and thank you very much. I have about 600 more videos, and there's bound to be something you might find useful in there if you want to have a um, check them out. They're all in playlists. They should be pretty easy to find. I don't do Patreon, but down in the description you'll find affiliate links to the book depository and Amazon where you can buy stuff online. I get a small commission. You pay exactly the same price as you normally would. Just go through the link and buy what you want. You don't have to buy the thing I have links to, by the way. Now, if you have any questions, that's what the uh, live chat box is for. Um, give me your feedback. What did you think? Do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? Is there something you would like to add? Is there something else you do with your ogres that I have missed or you would like to share with everybody? Um, if you're not part of the live stream, or hey, even if you want to say hi, that's fine too. Um, if you're not part of the live stream, that's what the comment section is all about. Just go down to the comment section and just type in there, and I'll respond to you as quickly as I possibly can. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, I'm not gone. I'm just going to bring this um, screen back. And I see I have William. How's it going? Save missiles for artillery and just run over the infantry. Or is that Steve Jackson, Jackson's ogres? You know, I think... Um, William, you're right. I don't think they worry, worry about throwing anything. Artillery is not something they concern themselves with. And yes, um, I think running over infantry is something that they would consider doing. Certainly pushing them over and trampling them. Um, but also too, you know, um, ogres eat things. So if they 
feel like the battle's not going well for them, um, they might just consider grabbing uh, a snack and running off with it. You know, one of the smallest individual in the party, grabbing that snack, and then while it's struggling, just fleeing combat. That's certainly one way you could play it. Okay, I don't see too many other comments there. Um, hopefully this has been useful to somebody. Um, I, I really have been a bit concerned about doing the ogre. It's quite a difficult um, monster to discuss because the stat block is so simple. There isn't an awful lot to it. So what do you do with something that's as simple as that? You can play it simple. You can play it erratic. You just play it like... I think of um, an ogre, um, not so much like Shrek, because Shrek's just too bright, but I think of an ogre more like um, the creatures from almost the trolls that you saw in, I believe it was The Hobbit, the first Hobbit movie that, uh, that got produced, even if you don't like that. Even the, the trolls that you find in The Hobbit book and sort of how they function. Although their conversation is a pretty pretty hot pretty high brow for an ogre if you ask me okay all right i'm gonna leave it there and um i will catch up with everybody uh probably in two days i will be publishing another video that's pre-recorded um it'll be a a rough cut edit of a live stream i did some time ago for tomorrow and um and then following that so that'll be for tomorrow and then the day after you'll get a Dungeon Master questions and answer live stream and I'll schedule that at about 12 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time. But I will put it up so you can see when it's taking place um, for anybody who's interested. Okay, well thank you very much for everybody who showed up to watch and uh, good night, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever you have. And look after yourself.